I'd like to do a, a very simple demonstration to illustrate polar and nonpolar substances, compounds or molecules, and also that illustrates uh, density and immiscibility of liquids and uh, also demonstrates the properties of common everyday substances, materials, uh, and how they can be used to show some of these chemical properties such as polar and nonpolar. I'm going to make two-phase liquid systems, that is two liquids in uh, a bottle. And I'm going to use a very common everyday substance to illustrate the differences between those substances, those liquids and water. And the everyday substance I'm going to use is paper. I'm simply going to take the paper and with a pencil, can you see that? I'm going to just make very, very dark uh, graphite coated paper. Pencil lead is not lead, of course, it is graphite, it is carbon. And basically I'm coating that with a thick layer of graphite. And that looks pretty good. And then what you, I simply do are take a, simple, take a simple hole punch and punch out graphite coated paper discs. And I'm going to put this over the Petri dish that I've got set up here. It's a divided Petri dish for no apparent other reason than I have two sets of uh, these graphite discs. And I'm going to put some of them into one side. And what I want you to notice is that, you know, I already did this ahead of time and put some in there, but I just wanted to show you that that's what I was doing so you didn't think, well, those were special discs somehow or, you know, whatever. They're not. And so we've got, I've put some of those on each side. And you can, and I had done that beforehand with another uh, index card. So I've got probably about 15 or so uh, graphite coated discs, but they're coated only on one side. So on some of them you can see that they're face up and the other one face down, but they've both, they're identical random paper discs coated on one side. The two phase systems that I want to make are water and an organic solvent in each case, but I'm going to use two different organic solvents. I will use water in each, and I want about 50 milliliters of water in each uh, bottle here that I have in, in front of me. Let me. Move this up a little. So, it's close enough. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna add 50 milliliters to each bottle. Okay. And then the two solvents that I'm going to use are hexane and trichloroethylene. I'll do the hexanes first. Uh, it's called hexanes because it's a mixture of hexane and n-hexane, that is straight chain C6H14, uh, and a couple of branched chain isomers, but they're all hexanes. Let's take the water out of the way. And these are both going to be colorless solvents that I'm using. And I want about 50 milliliters of the hexanes. And I also want 50 milliliters of my second solvent later, which is going to be trichloroethylene. But I'm not going to uh, open that bottle up yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and add the 50 milliliter. Actually, first, let's... Uh, Let's label our bottles, because otherwise we won't remember which one we had. But no, we're not going to label it. That's okay, we'll remember. Hexane in front of the hexane bottle, and trichloroethylene. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead and add the uh, 50 milliliters of hexane. And I'm going to cap that just for a moment, but can you see that that is a two-layer liquid? Do you see the, uh, that you have two immiscible liquids? I'm not going to pick it up because uh, we'll get out of focus, but there are two colorless, clear colorless uh, liquid layers in them. Usually you can see that by focusing on the interface. Is that pretty clear? Okay. And, in this, and that's the water and hexane. Now, 
hexane is less dense than water. So in that two-layer liquid, which layer is hexane? You know, if I had a dime for every time a student would ask me that when we were doing something with organic solvents, well, which layer is which? Well, which layer do you think is which? I don't know. Well, let's think about it. It has to do with the density. Hexane is less dense, is a hydrocarbon. It's less dense than water. It's the upper layer. So we have hexane on top there, water on the bottom. Although we'd have to, if you know they wanted to, you'd have to prove that to them. Now in the second one, I'm going to use a halogenated organic solvent, which is trichloroethylene. And again, I want about 50 milliliters of that. I'm going to go ahead and cap that bottle. But I'll keep it there so that we remember that's the trichloroethylene. Now this, in this case, it looks like there's a pale color to that, just slightly. And can you also see on that one, oh, I have to pick this up for a moment because there we go, okay. Let's do that. The hexane and water, trichloroethylene and water, you can see the two layers there as well. And in this case, we have a halogenated organic solvent. All halogenated solvents are more dense than water, and so that halogenated organic solvent is the bottom layer. Now what I want to do is to each of these, I want to add from each side the graphite disks. And so I'm going to open that up pick up this and just add from one side here and these are all random so some of them except they're in some of them are face up some of them are face down it won't matter though because what we want to observe after we add them is which way those graphite disks are going to face and we have at least three possibilities right they could all end up with the black side up. They could all, and I got a couple here on the, so just so that I have an equal number in each. You know, it's one of those things that if, if you do things always systematically, then you have to do them systematically all the time. That's just the way I am. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add the graphite disks from the other side to the trichloroethylene bottle. And again, the, they can all end up graphite disk side up, they can all end up graphite side down, or it might not matter at all, right? You predict that it's totally random. What difference should it make whether that piece of paper is coated with graphite on one side? I was trying to get them all in here so that we have enough that we can get a good look at. It's hard because they're so small and you get a little electrostatics here with the paper and the gloves and all of that. One thing you'll learn. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and cap that one. Okay, so I have hexane and water. Now what I am going to do is shake them just so that they will be uh, well mixed and then we should see the liquid layers separate again. So this is the hexane and water and I'm just going to mix that up. I'm going to pop the lid just a little bit just in case. It builds up any solvent uh, vapor pressure in there. And you can see that when I shook it, uh, the liquid layers are separating. Can you see the two liquid layers in there? And I'll go ahead and do the second one and then we'll focus on the uh, the graphite disks. Now if it was going to be random, you would think it would be random here, right? Because I put in the disks randomly, but then I shook it. And let's focus on the first one. They're both separating into the layers. In This is the hexane and water. How are the graphite disks oriented? Can you see that clearly? All of the graphite disks are oriented with the pencil side up, right? How about which is toward the hexane, right? Because the hexane is the upper layer, the water is the lower layer, and they're sitting right at the interface between the two solvents, which is neat in and of itself, that they're not on top or, or sinking, but they're right at the interface. And all of the graphite disks are such that the graphite side is up and the plain paper side is down. How about in the one with the trichloroethylene? Now there we're seeing a little bit of cloudiness on the uh, bottom layer, which is the trichloroethylene. Chloroethylene layer. 
In this one, trichloroethylene is more dense than water. It's the organic layer that's down, and that just means some water is entrapped. If you let it sit long enough, it's, it's, they're going to be uh, clear, transparent layers again. But which way are the paper disks oriented in the second bottle? You can probably see from the top that all the paper, the paper side is up, that is toward the water, right? And the graphite side is down. So what are we seeing in each case? Well, in each case, the paper, the plain paper side is toward the water. In the hexane water, that means they're down, graphite, the graphite side is up. In the trichloroethylene, the paper side is again toward the water, but that's now the upper layer because we have a more dense organic solvent. So in each case, the, in taking it the other side then, the graphite is always pointed toward the organic solvent. Here the graphite is toward the hexane. Here the graphite side is toward the trichloroethylene. And I said in the beginning that this would demonstrate polar versus nonpolar substances. Graphite, pencil lead, is carbon. It is nonpolar. By definition, uh, it has to be nonpolar. Water, we know, is a very polar molecule. Most, many organic solvents, certainly hydrocarbons and um, or, um, some simple halogenated organics, are pretty much nonpolar uh, liquids, nonpolar substances. And so the nonpolar carbon is always oriented toward the nonpolar liquid. Or you could look at it from the other point of view. Paper, you know, I, I keep saying that we want to talk just about the fact that this is a chemical. You know, all chemicals are toxic, right? This is a chemical. Paper is a chemical. Paper is, a very, is composed of very hydrophilic substances. It comes from cellulose, which has multiple OH groups. You put OH groups on a compound, it becomes polar. So paper, plain paper, is very polar and hydrophilic. And so that's attracted, if you will, then toward the water in each case, which is the polar substance. So this is a, a simple demonstration. Now, trichloroethylene is a possible carcinogen. So some of you may be saying, well, I, I certainly don't want to do that. And I wouldn't uh, recommend that you have your students do this. I would do this as a demonstration. This bottle capped and sealed with parafilm will keep for years. And to prove that to you, I do have two very old bottles here. They were different shapes. We probably tested this demonstration, and I could go back and look at the exact date, but I'm going to say probably 2004, four years ago. When we tested it, we made the bottles with the graphite disks, and these are the bottles. It's labeled here, hexanes and water, trichloroethylene and water, and the, A, the disks are still oriented exactly the same way, and B, the bottles are still fine. There's no problem, and you're not getting any of the volatile liquid out of it. You can seal that with parafilm and so on. So you can work with these substances as long as you are working. I would recommend doing it in a ventilated lab only or in the hood when you set these up. Once you make these bottles, however, they will last for years, and the proof is right here that they will last for years. Thank you.